My name is Isaac McGinley, and I am the director of Big Love by Charles Mee. Well, the play Big Love is about a lot of things, but in terms of action happening on stage, it's about 50 brides who run away from a massive wedding that they were, they had to sign a contract, like their father signed a contract for them to wed their cousins, who are their 50 cousins, who, and they're all brothers, and the brides are all sisters, and they all escape from this wedding on a massive boat and invade uh, this man's terrace uh, by the name Piero. They invade his terrace and they take up refuge there in a way and they try to get him to help them get out of marrying their 50 cousins. No, there is only one question to ask. Do we want to marry them or not? No, we don't. Are you going to let them drag us away from your house and do whatever they want with us? Yeah, it's actually pretty interesting because it takes a lot of classical influences but done in a modern way. Um, which we kind of, which we reflect in the design. Uh, we have uh, Fiona, for instance, is one of the characters. She's very much a go-getter type A personality who's very, and, and out of all the brides, she's the most against the wedding. And even in her dress that we have, it's kind of, reminds you of the Spartan women, you know, come back with your shield or on it type personality, you know what I mean? And so that's reflected in that. And we have, yeah, but it's done in a modern way, so we have cool stuff happening as if like we have furniture that's plexiglass boxes that have candles inside of them and stuff like that. So it's taking old Greek influences and making them newer and more open for younger audiences to actually fully get. Because what's, what's pretty cool about the play is that he goes in, like Chuck Mee describes in the stage directions, what happens here, but then almost at every single visual moment in the play it also says, or you cannot do that and do something completely on your own which is really fun for a director and also a visual artist because I'm a visual artist as well and just getting, like, getting to have so much fun visually. But in terms of how all that stuff manifested, I would have to say it had a lot to do with my year and a half long relationship with my uh, boyfriend Greg um, and a lot of the struggles and fear and excitement and love and all those things that go along with being in love, you know what I mean? And it was really cool too, is that it just, that it just doesn't touch on love, it also touches on issues of masculinity. Because for instance, there is this one scene where the three guys are doing backflips, flipping and grabbing each other and throwing them up and catching them and stuff like that. It a lot, has a lot to do with the hoops that men have to jump through to be considered a man and what is a man, you know what I mean? There's a similar thing for women too, because uh, it's exemplified most between two characters, uh, Olympia, played by Sarah Hamilton, and uh, Fiona, played by Victoria Nassif. And what happens a lot between them is that Olympia is the stereotypical girl. She, she even says in the play, I like men, I like men, and I like to be submissive. Which is a great line, I love that line. I know men who think, oh, a woman. I'd like to take care of her. Not in any way that he thinks he's superior and has control, but in a way that he understands a woman is a different sort of person. And precious because of that. And Fiona is the exact opposite. She is, I guess, in best terms, a feminist, <laughs> in a way, you know what I mean? Like the typical fem uh, feminist that you think of. Because he thinks if he can make some connection with a woman, that will make him a whole human being. But it won't! It never will! You know, she very much is against that onset of girls must be pretty, girls must be, you know, dainty, girls must be stupid in a way. Girls must, you know, make their make home cooked meals and serve the man. Girls must serve the man, and I think that's what Fiona is ultimately against. But at the same time, it also looks at in a way that Olympia. When you look at Olympia, is that necessarily a bad thing? You know, so it raises questions. Very ambiguous in that way because the play is not telling you what's up. It's just bringing up points on both sides, which I think is really fun because it makes you leave with your own thoughts about what femininity is, what masculinity is, and what love is. Although masculinity is a big part of the play, it's not the whole of the play. A lot of what comes out of it is love, and fear of love, and fear of responsibility, and how you take that love, and how... Because, I mean, the title of the play is Big Love, you know, so we can't forget that aspect of it. And it's just a lot of fear of being in a committed relationship, and fear of taking the responsibility of another. It's a very fearful play. A lot of the characters are very scared. And they're... And, they're and it's really interesting from the groom's side, because when you first see them, you kind of, in the beginning of the play, you view them as these terrible men who are like entrapping these women, but later on in the play, you find out that these men want the same thing the girls do. They just want a love that's true, that can sustain throughout the course of their life. And it, even one character, Nico, says, I want a love that consumes me, that consumes my whole life. 
You know what I mean? And ultimately, yeah, that's what I think all the characters are gunning for. They just don't know the right way to go about getting it. 